Um, this short video will be to review the dot product and remember that these reads as a dot b a dot b and it's uh, a is a vector and b is a vector and so this would be the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of theta which is the angle between the two then that is also equal to this um, AX, AY, AZ. Um, that's my cat, sorry. So, um, we have that those two equalities here. So, as I mentioned, this uh, dot product is used to determine the projection of a vector on any axis or along any line A, A. So the unit vector in that direction, AA, we'll call U sub A. So whenever we want to determine the projection of a vector along the line AA, the first thing you have to do is find the unit vector along that line, and then uh, find the scalar projection of A along that line A using the dot product. So this is the scalar amount. So this is a very important equation, the magnitude of the projection of vector A along the line AA whose direction is specified by the vector U sub A is determined from that dot product. And the third step is then uh, you have the magnitude of the projection but you don't have the vector and that vector along line AA in the classroom we were calling it use of A, but of course uh, in your book they call it that it's the parallel vector and it would be that magnitude multiplied now by U sub A, okay? Or, as mentioned um, in the notation from the classroom, would be, uh, sorry, not the vector but the magnitude here. clear. So it's the magnitude multiplied by the unit vector A. Remember to review the class notes from earlier to understand this here. Finally, let's say that you want to find the perpendicular component. Uh, so remember, whenever we had x and y, a vector in the f, x, and f, y, we said it was fx squared plus fy squared equals f squared. So uh, in vector notation, f equals fxi plus fyj. So this is the, where this equation comes from. So these are the equations that are important. So what I've done here is these expressions that have vectors A and vector V can be anything. So I have included them in this equation uh, the same way you're going to uh, be using them. So here you have the force vector dot RA gives you F the magnitude of F times the magnitude of RA cosine of theta. You can do that either with the position vector in the direction A or the unit vector and this angle should not be different. Then the magnitude of the projection of the vector along line A is F vector dot UA vector but then the amount is a scalar amount and then in order to get the vector in that same direction from that scalar amount. This would be your equation. And then of course for the parallel and perpendicular vectors this is the vector expression and then of course coming from uh, the fx squared plus fy squared here you have the other relationship. So uh, you can pause this video and make sure you understand this um, 
notations and you know exactly what we're referring to. Remember that we talked about um, this last part from prior classes, so review your notes. So what I'm going to do is uh, review these concepts based on this uh, second example. We discussed the first example in class. So um, the given is that there is a force acting on the pole at point A and the components of the force acting parallel and perpendicular to the axis of the pole. So you need to find the component of the force that is parallel to this axis of the pole, which is 0A. So, um, of course, we need to figure out, uh, let me see, you need to figure out the F, which is the vector, remember the notation? You need to find the position vector from 0 to A, or the origin to A, and the unit vector from U, from uh, 0 to A, okay? Then we'll determine the parallel component and the perpendicular component and maybe other things for you to understand. So, the first thing I want to do is, um, someone in class asked me to always have the equations uh, on the screen, so whenever you pause you can see those expressions. So, the first thing I'm going to do is, let's figure out the vector for the force, okay? So the vector for the force, we have, um, this is the magnitude of the force, and then here we have a 3D, remember this would be like the F prime, this here would be the Fx, this quantity here would be Fz, and this distance here would be your Fy. So, the easiest to calculate first is the component in Z, so Fc equals F times sine of 60. Again, you can pause this at any time, so um, I'll just leave this expressed for now. So now I have my first component, remember, I need to find the expression for the vector, so it would be in the form of fxi plus fyj plus fck, and then this would be f sine of theta. So let's take a look at um, f prime, which I will need to calculate fx and fy. So f prime equals f cosine of 60 degrees. So now I can calculate fx and fy. And I'm going to leave this expressed differently. So fx would be equal to f prime sine of 60. Or would be the same as saying f cosine of 60 times sine of 60. And then fy would be equal to f prime cosine of 60 or f cosine of 60 times cosine of 60. So, um, now that I have that, your um, fx should be equal to minus 150. Um, your fy should be equal to 259.8. And the z should be equal to 519.6. Okay, so let me just uh, delete this so that I can show the final expression. So equals minus one fifty i plus two 
19.8j plus 519.6 and this is um, pounds in this case. So if I calculate the magnitude of this by 150 squared plus 259.8 squared plus uh, 519.6 squared, this has to be 600 pounds because that's what was given. Okay, so I've done one part. I have my vector f. So now I need to know my vector position vector from 0 to a, which is the next step. So um, my um, coordinates in a are minus 4, 4, and 2. And of course the origin is 0, 0, 0. So my position vector from O to A would be equal to uh, A minus the origin. So it would be minus 4I plus 4J plus 2K. And then this is in feet. I think in the other slides they might have had meters. So here's my position vector. So now I have to get my uh, magnitude for that vector. R0A equals square plus four squared equals this plus two squared. And this would be 6 feet. So the unit vector in that uh, direction would be minus 4 divided by 6i plus 4 divided by 6j plus 2 divided by 6k or minus 2 thirds i plus 2 thirds j plus 1 third k feet. So now I have everything that I need. So um, to calculate first the magnitude of the component of the force parallel to the um, axis of the pole OA. So, um, so we have done this, we have done this, uh, so we have all this, so um, the component of the force along OA, that magnitude would be F dot zero A. So it's a dot product. Okay? Just as a reminder, let me put here what are the force vector, which was minus one fifty I plus two fifty nine point eight J plus five 19.6k and then u 0 a would be minus 2 thirds i plus 2 thirds j plus 1 third k okay yes so f dot U0A would be 150 negative times negative 2 thirds plus 259.8 times 
times two thirds plus, and then plus the next one, five nineteen point six times one third. And this is four forty six pounds. So this pooling of six hundred pounds. The projection of that force along that, remember, it's like a muscle. If we measure the force along pole 0A, it would be 446 pounds. So that is the first part. And um, now, the other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to leave it expressed, is what is that vector? F0A. Well, it would be the magnitude of that vector times the unit vector OA. So it's a multiplication, so it would be 446 times minus 2 thirds I plus 2 thirds J plus 1 third K. So this would be equal to 4, 4, 6 times negative 2 thirds i plus 4, 4, 6, 2 thirds j plus, now this is not asking for that, but I'm doing it anyways. Okay, so that's the vector. So finally, uh, let's answer that last question. What is the perpendicular? Uh, component of F. And so what we have is that the force is 600 pounds and then the parallel component of the force was 446 pounds. So the perpendicular squared plus the parallel squared equals F squared so then the perpendicular would be 600 squared minus 446 squared. And it would be the square root of this, which is 4.01 pounds. Okay? So I hope this helps understanding uh, the problem better. Remember to pause and understand everything. Thank you.